back in the uh, capital city of Selim, Enstad, which is basically picture a massive city of trees um, grown by elf and druid magic. <clears throat> um, so, oh, by the way, you've been given a house here for your outstanding good works in helping to stop the Scarlet Brotherhood in the Temple of Elemental Evil. So, congratulations. Nice. Alright, so you and Hank are hanging out. What are you doing this fine morning? Uh, I think Oslin would be doing a bit of meditating and trying to connect with nature. Alright. Connecting with nature... Um, you're sitting, you're sitting in meditation, um, the, the peace of the city, for a city, Enstad is incredibly peaceful. Um, the elves have designed everything so the acoustics don't carry very far, so no matter where you are in the city, it's quiet. Um, so you're sitting, Hank is resting next to the fire, and as you're sitting and meditating, you see, <clears throat> you see a, a disturbing vision, a vision of an orc. Um, and she has a, she's wearing a purple robe with an eye sigil upon it. Um, and you, you sense a great darkness accompanying this, this, Orc woman. <clears throat> so, what do you do with this bit of information? I think he would snap out of it, and uh, he would tap Hank up on the shoulder, mount him, and make his way to see Arius. All right. <clears throat> That brings us to Varg. Yeah, I just come. Welcome back. Yay. So Varg, <laughs> Varg or Knuter, um, what are you what are you up to this fine morning in Enstad? Other than listening to um, Rin just munching the hell out of elvish pastries. Uh <laughs> kind of more of more or less just um really taken in the sights um as, as as per usual like i have car out and he's just like um he's just basking and i'm just like sitting against him like someone would sit against a tree trunk okay all right so so you and car are hanging out um is a lovely day a couple of a couple of young goblins come up to you. They're like, one of them who's who seems a little bit slow-witted goes, I like your gator. <laughs> I like your snaggle tooth. Huh? <laughs> he starts feeling his teeth. <laughs> Made you feel. <laughs> oh. You're a big dog guy. And, uh, you're a fleshy thing. <laughs> you saying I'm, I'm fat? Uh, this guy is not smart. <laughs> Oh boy. It's just like, um, can I help you with anything? I just like your gator. <laughs> um, he, uh, your car just ma ma makes a nod that he likes the guy too, and car's just like, he likes you too. I, 
Just All right, he reaches into his pouch and um, hands you a a dried fish. He's like, <laughs> you can give this to your dater friend. Oh, um, he'll love it. My name's Clem. Uh, it's nice to meet you, Clem. What's your name? I I I am Varg. Varg. I like the way that sounds. Varg. 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 Ren, can you can you go grab Trowel? I need some help. After the next right. three pastries. <laughs> yes, nice. Thank you. <laughs> All right, another goblin comes up, and th this one, um, she's like, Clem, there you are. What are you doing over here? <laughs> Looks at you, Varg, and says, Please don't kill him. He's just my brother. Oh, no, he's, 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 He's being well behaved, really very friendly. Just you know, was I wondering what was going on. Kicked by a deer. Guard <laughs> <laughs> just turns turns away and like you know just covers his muzzle and just like tries to hide the fact that he's like snorting. <laughs> All right, so pretty soon there are five goblins surrounding you asking you questions. Um, uh, <laughs> there's one particularly grumpy goblin who's like, that when you're not looking at Gator will eat us. <laughs> then, there, then there's one who just hands you a flower. <laughs> Varg is now Snow White. <laughs> kind of, except with, except with five goblins. <laughs> the Wolfman and the five goblins. <laughs> nice. All right, so you're you're there. That's that's what you're doing. We're gonna switch over to Arius. Arius, what are you up to? I suppose he will be with his wife and the matriarch of the clan, as well as his his father-in-law, discussing arrangements for the baby. Um. Well, father-in-law is not here. Um, Where is that? Whatever happened to the father-in-law? I don't remember. Father-in-law is still up um, in Verbabonk. Okay. Um, problem with father-in-law is he's not allowed here. The only uh, reason that your human wife is allowed here is she's your human wife. <laughs> okay. Well, all right. With the exception of the of of the father-in-law, the he's talking of a baby preparations. Mar Marilda is, she has taken the um, opportunity to ensure that Enid will have the finest of elven midwives and um, that, that she will want for nothing. <laughs> of course, Enid, Enid is, is pleased. She's enchanted by the... Uh, the fairy folk here, um, never really having seen any before now. So, it is a... You're, you're having a lovely, lovely time when a halfling on a dog comes riding up. <clears throat> Is, is, is he charging? Is he going is to... To ch Gromek is trying to chase him down. No, no, you can't just run in there. <laughs> <laughs> Are you on Gormac's cheese a... again? <laughs> uh, Gormak's an orc, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think Oslin would like stop abruptly and yeah. ask if. 
he knows who this is represented by and he would explain the purple robe with the the eye insignia upon it mm. Is there a way that like he can convey feelings by touch? Um what can an orcish an orcish mind meld would be dangerous. What cantrips do you have, Oslin? Um I have druidcraft. I have druidcraft, shape water, right. speak with Roll animals. Druidcraft. You can use druidcraft to try to uh, share the, uh, empathetically share the emotions you've experienced. It has to be by touch, though. So roll, please. Unfortunately, trying to reach Gromek's mind is a little bit difficult. <laughs> um, um, you, there... see, you, see, you see lots of uh, axe sharpening techniques. <laughs> <laughs> um, Oslin will withdraw his hand and like I think he will just try to portray the the feelings through visual looks in his eyes towards him you know and just you seem to explain to him yeah like extremely the like the purple robe does not does not tell me much I I mean if it was someone worshipping Grumsh it would be a red robe with a scarlet eye. Perhaps Master Arius is someone you should speak to about this. That's who I was on my way to see. Well, he's talking with his mother. And mother. I don't know. <laughs> well, Which mother? just spring forth from trees. <laughs> or do they actually have babies? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, um, I would have yeah, babies. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Don't do orcs spring up from trees or from the ground? No, oh, no, 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 no. We are usually clubbed by our females and then mated with. <laughs> so I, I think will Oslin would actually kind of. Crack a smile at that. <laughs> at, you actually get the impression that he feels like he said too much, and he turns <laughs> a darker shade of green as he hurries on to Arius. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, mm. our halfling friend Oslin Tea Leaf is here to see you. Tea kettle. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, if I excuse me, uh, mother, my love, I should go and talk to the uh, halfling. Gromek is like, he speaks of a an orc woman in a purple robe with uh, an eye sigil. Now, Arius, this gives you pause. Um... What he has described is the robe of a priest of Therizdun, the sleeping god. Mm -hmm. Which even the gods of evil fought to put to sleep. <laughs> well, that's troubling. Uh, we'll, um... Oh, he did try to massage my hand. <laughs> it was not effectual. <laughs> Let's just stick with 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 the uh, with the purple robe, uh, and f forget about hand touching with the halfling. Right, that, that's that, that's go to speak to uh, Oslin. Of course. All right. So Oslin, um, Gromek leads Arius to you. <laughs> Uh, Oslin will greet Arius with a bow. Hmm, you actually do get shorter. Interesting. <laughs> Oslin will uh, approach you and explains the situation. 
in, this morning I was meditating and I had a terrible vision of the priest, of this lady, female or in this robe. And I feel like it's coming this way. Good. Arius used the context of the Elven city to see if there's any word around the uh, vicinity about this. Um, yeah, make a charisma check. <clears throat> Alright, um, not many, you know, actually you do get a couple of things, um, there are some rumblings among certain members of the uh, of the Selenese army that really this uh, that the queen's acceptance of orcs is really going too far, um, allowing them into their borders and whatnot. So beyond that, you don't hear much about orcs and uh, Therizdun at least. I think there's going to be orcish shanty towns in in some parts. Oh, they've built villages um, outside the city, so and they're pretty nice villages. I mean, you know, they're not. It it, it once again, um, Queen Yolande is quite generous with her subjects, and because the druids bring forth great bounties from Selene. Um, there's not really much of a problem with poverty within the, the Fey Kingdom here. I suppose the thing to do would be to gather uh, Trell and uh, Varg and go and see the uh, Orcish villagers and talk right, about after this. Headed off to do that. Trell, what are you up to? <laughs> Well, uh, Troll definitely planted that uh, tree in heart seed. Yes, and it is growing quite well. It started to sprout. So, yeah, he's just kind of been watering that, and uh, that, that's pretty much probably where he is right now, just checking if it's grown a face yet. Okay. Uh, there are a couple of pixies that are like, Oh, Antaria. Wait, what did they say? You're planting a tree in, aren't you? And he nodded and said, It's from one that was corrupted. It's the only part left of it that survived. Oh. The pixies sit down and lean against the little sprout and begin playing tiny harps and singing to it. Aw. He just kind of, like, takes out his, uh, his pan pipes and plays along with them. Okay. Excellent. So at what point does Rin come barging in, dripping crumbs? <laughs> <laughs> he just kind of <laughs> slowly, like, flutters over, considering he's kind of heavy at this point. And, um, <laughs> like, falls down a bit next to them. <laughs> and says, eh, wolf guy wanted you for something. <laughs> And he's just like, you mean Varg? Yeah, the dude. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, he's just like, anything in particular? Like, goblins, I think? <laughs> and, I, I don't know, I was, I was pretty, um, pretty pre preoccupied. Pre pre I, I get what you're trying to say. <laughs> and so he just kind of scoops up the small dragon and and makes his way o over there making sure the uh the little tree and sprout is okay first oh yeah the the, the pixies are kind of taking care of it um so yeah you go over and varg is okay the goblins are asking you all kinds of questions varg oh joy like uh one of them one of them's like did you ever shoot anyone through the eye, and it came out the back of their head. Once, yes. Oh, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> and another one of the goblins passes him a copper coin. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
right, so... <laughs> Trell, you come upon this scene of these five goblins regaling Varg with telling them stories of, uh, you know, Clem is like, he looks over at you and goes, hey there, you got wolf parts down below. <laughs> Indeed I do. He's just kind of like leaning against a tree and smiling at, at uh, Varg's misfortune of being asked all these questions. <laughs> Bark's smiling at this point. He just looks, looks over at Trell and says, Hey, Trell, look, I got famous somehow. <laughs> like, you didn't. Well, you looks up proudly and says, says, I discovered him. I like the gator. Car <laughs> just says, I like you too. Like... He hands him another fish. <laughs> Nom. <laughs> I bet you could dump a bucket of fish down there and it all disappear. <laughs> <laughs> you can. I, I've done it before. <laughs> At this moment, an elvish messenger, very stately, says, Lord Syrian requires your presence. Uh, what's the show pony want? <laughs> I'm certain I do not know, sir. Okay. Well, I gotta leave you, my adoring goblin friends. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been called by the show pony. I must go. Clem's <laughs> eyes get really big. He's like, he's even got a pony. <laughs> <laughs> The great, the great show pony of fiery destruction. Yes, is uh, <laughs> the fire pony. breathing pony. <laughs> well, it certainly beats my pony. Yeah, he's just going. He, you know, it took a while before he stopped being depressed. I never said he stopped being depressed. <laughs> <laughs> he's so that just happy to be yeah, he's he's in a pasture. <laughs> the goblin. The last thing you hear the goblins say to each other as you walk out of sight is they're like, "See, I told you we were right to come up from the wild coast. This place is heaven." <laughs> <laughs> All right. So is everyone getting together now? Mm-hmm. And he stops you. Okay, excellent. Um, you folks are all together in in uh, Arius's drawing room, and so Arius, you have the floor. <laughs> Ooh. Of course I do. It's my house. Anyway, of course, that's, <laughs> why, that's why I gave you the floor. It's your house. <laughs> Right, so our Oslin here has had a rather disturbing uh, image, vision of the uh, what, what are they called? Um, an orc priest of Therisdom, the sleeping god. An orc priest of wisdom. Therisdom. <laughs> Therisden, sorry. Therisden. Oh, Therisden. And we need to find out what sh uh, this priest wants. Do we have any idea where she is? Nope, but I thought we would go to the Orcish villagers. Hmm. Honestly, if she's, if she's an evil priestess, she wouldn't be here. I think she would probably be somewhere along the wild coast. Okay. A lot of people coming from there. I was actually just bombarded with questions from goblins from the from that from that area. Hmm. 
I mean, if that if, Maybe... if anyone thinks that's any correlation. Do, sh shall we talk to your goblin friends? I mean, I, I do wonder why they like why they would have come up here. I think that's the best lead we have for now. So let's go and journey to your goblin friends. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure they're still hanging out with Car. So. Uh, oh, oh uh, okay. Right. When you get back. Um, goblins are helping to are helping to. Um, when you get back to Car, uh, the goblins are helping to um, to beautify the vegetation on his back. Is it working? Yeah, they're they're they're, ba they're basically just planting, and you know. Doing stuff on his back, you know, being nice to him. Barb's walking beside Ar Arius and is just pointing at the goblins and introducing them as they're walking towards them, and then like points at Clem, and that's Clem. He likes Car. Uh, there, um, there's Arfi, Nelly, Isrock, Clem, and Tolra. <laughs> so, all right, Clem looks up at you and goes, "You're an elf." And you're observant. My friends, this is the show pony. <laughs> <laughs> you ride an elf? <laughs> you breathe fire? <laughs> Which oh, point the rock sort of, so sort of claps, a hand, claps a hand over Clem's mouth and says, If you will pardon my cousin, he is a little on the slow side. He was kicked in the head by a deer. Um, I'm more interested as to what uh, Varg was telling him. Oh, um, I, I, honestly, we, we, we have no place in the quarrels of people obviously as tall and dangerous as <laughs> yourselves. Um, how may I serve you, my lord? I know, I, I was referring to Varg telling... Called your po but show pony. I, I okay. Anyway, yes, you came from the uh, from the eastern. Was it the eastern sea? You said the wild coast. Yeah. The wild coast. Sorry, the wild coasts. Yes, yes, we did. Um, a lot of a uh, lot of Safeton is going to war with facts. Um, and I think, I think the other petty kingdoms out there are getting involved too. Humans fighting humans. Do you know of anything of a priest that wears a purple robe and an eye sigil? This rock makes the sign against the evil eye. No, no, I've never seen anything like that, and I, I, I hope to Farallon I, I never do. Varg's Could I? <laughs> Go on. Uh, no, Varg's just gonna say, guys, if you know anything about that particular thing, we're here to help. You can tell us. We'll help you get rid of the problem if it's a problem. Um, no, we, we've, unfortunately, we've never seen anything like that. We just, well, we do know there's a fellow named King Barrett, um, of a little tiny duchy south of Safeton, um, calls himself King Barrett, and he's, he's got an army of, of ruffians he intends to, to start marching on the Welkwood. That certainly sounds like a problem we should <clears throat> look into. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, but then what's the correlation with the purple robe? Unless I missed something. I'm afraid I don't know anything about purple robes, Mr. Varg. How far away is... Um, the coast to where we are about eight days 
walk or four days ride? Because I'm wondering if about all two those... hours. Because I'm wondering if those uh, wars may spread into our kingdom. Well, the Welkwood kind of like um, is kind of around Selene. Um, ah. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at a map right now. So, uh, uh, mm -hmm. Safeton and Fax are like uh, you, you kind of have to go through the Welkwood a little bit to like get to one or the other. Um, on this map that I'm looking at anyway. So yes, yeah, they're uh. They're they're more kind of like I don't know if if uh, Welkwood is Selene territory or not, but it, it is it is Selene's territory. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So they are going through there. Uh, for, for and the... this uh, this fellow that Isrock is talking about wants to try during the conflict to claim um, a couple of. Uh, well, probably about 10 or 15 miles worth of forest, and then clear-cut mm -hmm. it to build ships. To build what now? Clear-cut section of forest he's trying to claim to build ships. Hmm. Okay, which is cutting into Selene territory, which is probably not something the kingdom would like. No, that, 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 no, because wars have been started for less things <laughs> than chopping down trees. And this, I imagine elves really don't like when you chop their trees. Their property. They're, n they're not allowed to chop their trees down, no. And what about the orc in the purple robe? We don't know. Well, Aris is going to write a letter to his mother so she can inform the queen about this and... I guess they will travel. Perhaps Bromack, travel. Bromack actually suggests something. He's like, "My lord, could I take some men at arms and go into the mountains and see if there are any orcs there that are practicing Therizdun worship?" That's yes, yes, a good idea. Yes, do what you must. You be careful. I shall. Gromek comes over to uh, to you, Tretrell. And and Varg, listen. Um, keep him safe <laughs> as best He's... we can. Also, <laughs> looks at he shoots Oslin kind of a mean look. Oslin <laughs> 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 returns it with, with like <laughs> with like a questionable look. Like, what did I do? You threw him in a hole. <laughs> 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 oh man! <laughs> Barb's just Barb's gonna part with a uh, with a uh, Grelmac with a uh, with a paw on the shoulder and an orcish goodbye and um, good luck. Sorry. And he wishes you good hunting. So, all right. So, are you all going to fly by Griffin? Ride horses. I mean, Griffin or, is um, the coolest way to go. It's also yeah. not very low profile. That is also true. We have well, Griffin's no, there. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, right. Think... Oslin wasn't wasn't there when we went to that halfling village and got the Griffin. Yeah, the so we went to a halfling village. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. we did. <laughs> there were so we're like, oh, this is awesome. <laughs> We got cheese too. Uh, you know, you're like level nine now, so you get to you get access <laughs> to like the groupings and stuff. So, I, I'm, I'm Oslin is like arms crossed, kind of has a pouty face at the moment about hearing of going to a halfling village. They had cheese also. There was cheese there. Arius had pets, Oslin. What's the most, like, indiscriminate thing we can ride? Do they have, like, giant lizards or something? Um, uh, horses. Camouflage? Uh, just horses? Or... It would be horses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, there, there aren't giant lizards. Those are much further south. <laughs> 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 
Um, <laughs> yeah, you're in a temperate forest, so giant lizards don't do so well here. Ah, okay. If you go to the Amedio jungle, though, they have um, dinosaurs. So. <laughs> that would be cool to ride. <laughs> ride a raptor. A Oslin, raptor. You, could wild, you could wild shape in, into one if you saw one. Ah, so we need we need, yes. to, we need to make sure he sees one first, though. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna try to do that. <laughs> you have a picture of one? <laughs> no, you have to see the animal. No, no, I know. <laughs> All right. Uh, by the way, look up medieval drawings of um, of rhinos. All right. At some point. Medieval. I'll give you an idea how dangerous it would be trying to use a uh, drawing. Okay, so you all are setting out um, into the forest. Uh, you've got your weapons, your armaments, and everything. And I've you ride. My horse and moss. <laughs> I have plants like all over my horse to attempt to camouflage it somewhat. The horse is like, "What are you doing to me?" <laughs> It should help with, with your camouflage in, in case you need to to not be seen out here. Of course, it's like, your logic is dubious at best. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, can I get a non-insulting horse? <laughs> oh no, I think it fits perfectly. <laughs> You're gonna hear me these arguing the whole way. Yeah, these are elf raised horses. They're all <laughs> snotty. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one that wanted to talk to animals. I didn't say it. <laughs> no. like, see, guys, this is why I wanted the lizards. The lizard wouldn't mouth off at me like this. <laughs> so I, horse I, has... I do have one angry, like, moss covered horse now. Yes. I mean, not really Var angry, it's just snarky about the whole situation. <laughs> I mean, if Var could understand what it was saying, it would, like, it, it would have, he would have taken you up on the offer, like, taken that horse off your hands, and, you know, just been all, like, you know, I don't know, intimidating or something, I don't know. Imagine if your horse was worse, though. <laughs> all right. Now, the other, the other horses are, you know, they're, the horses, you hear them bantering among themselves, talking about you know, look at that halfling riding a dog. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> the the mare the mare that is uh that uh, Arius is riding, she's very much like oh, I have nobility on my back. <laughs> I don't know what the rest of you are. <laughs> <laughs> Charles is more amused <laughs> by this than anything else. <laughs> all right, so you all move um, into the Welkwood. Uh, once again, this is very peaceful uh, land, the woodland protectors. You meet several patrols who greet you um, on the way, and it's just... It's a nice ride. Um, night, you stop. Um, you uh, you hear someone. Help! Help! Arius, is, help, please. Arius is going to send his uh, familiar to the direction of the sound. All right, your familiar sees a knoll, a hyena person, um, wearing just really, really nice clothes, um, hanging upside down in a kobold trap. I'm going to say that, uh, like, because uh, 
the favorite enemy I, I can kind of like, because of the perception and being able to smell that kind of stuff, like, wouldn't I be able to like, kind of like, sense that before it happened? Um, I'm just asking. Oh, I'm just asking. No, do, do you have Knowles as a favorite enemy? Yes. Um, as of right now, I still have to add one, uh, another enemy and an, another language, but I do have orcs and gnolls as my written down ones. You smell the knoll. Um, well, I mean, you smell him. Everybody hears him. He's not being quiet, and right. he's hanging upside down. And so, Chris, he's talk. He's talking to your familiar. He's like, "Well, you can't have me yet. I'm still alive." <laughs> 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 Uh, this is how it ends for poor Rip Fang. <laughs> Kobolds are going to come beat me until my entrails come out. <laughs> Those weird killed things in the holes of the sea princes. Uh, well, since, it, since, the, my end. since the air is clear, I, I think it would be safe to just go to that direction. Yeah, Charles is going to go ahead and go over there and, like, have a look at that trap, see how to uh, safely <gasps> undo it. He greets you in the most melodious elvish. Oh, heavens, thank you, thank you ever so much. I am in your debt, gentlemen, <laughs> and what handsome legs you have, sir. Very canine. Thank you. I'm not often complimented on them. Yes, well, being a canine myself, I know what good canine legs look like. <laughs> and he also has a tail. <laughs> and a lovely tail it is. Um, so you managed to cut him loose. He's down. He's like, oh, oh, heavens. Give me just a moment, gentlemen, while, I, while the blood rushes back from my head. Oh. So... I am Rip Fang, and I am in your debt. You sound a lot more noble than the gnolls we're used to. Well, you know. One does not judge all the elves by the drow, now does one. No heavens, no. Oh, well, that is true. So anyway, may I join you by your fireside? I wouldn't object, though uh, you may want to know that we are after uh, people who are, well, scar scouting after people who are going to attack the woods. Well, oh, then I shall help you, I shall aid you in any way I can in stopping these blackguards from cutting down these fine, fine forests. Do you have any combat experience? Uh, he's carrying a rapier, and um, that he's fought more than a few duels. Um, you also get the impression he's probably climbed out a lot of noblemen's windows, escaping after spending time with people he should not have. <laughs> I like him already. <laughs> I mean, not just because of that, but like because of like the whole the whole thing so far. Jory, he kind of sounds like Red Prince, doesn't he? And if if Varg were anything like me, he'd probably fall in love with him right then and there. But at that <laughs> at this moment, Varg is kind of like has a has a a predetermined idea of what Knowles are. So he's he clearly does not look at all very you know okay with this whole thing but he's kind of just keeping quiet but heavenly days a wolf man i have never seen such in my life and uh your name is arius is it not that would be correct yes lord arius it is an absolute pleasure and as i said i am at your service oh and a halfling and a dog how lovely, and your horses. Beautiful. <laughs> I'm sure the horses love being complimented. Yes, they do. They're like, oh, a knoll's so charming. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think that's kind of how Oslo, like, he's 
just kind of taken aback. I just, <laughs> is this for real? Trail makes sure to tell him how charmed the horses are. <laughs> So anyway, um, I find myself temporarily embarrassed and bereft of rations. Um, may I dine with you this evening? Uh, if you yeah. are going to go uh, do diplomacy upon the Wild Coast, I have many connections in the towns there. That may be useful. Yes, I, I said... I, I believe we may use your uh, expertise. Can oh, okay, this is this is gonna be like way off the charts, but can Varg insight this guy? Yeah. Yeah, Joe was gonna ask um him like uh where where he was in initially going when they found him. All right, so uh, yeah, Trell, you ask him, and he's like, well. I am an itinerant. I sing for my supper in various places. Um, he pulls out a little loot from his pack. <laughs> so I sing and I provide entertainment. Um, Varg, he's not lying. Yes. At once to inspect. <laughs> What'd you say? What was that? He's just weird. He's weird for a knoll. He doesn't act like a knoll. <laughs> What's wrong with this knoll? <laughs> it's probably been brought up by elves, baby. Anyway. Is uh, it actually a knoll? <laughs> well, you could ask him. I think Oz will ask, like, where are you from? I come from the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful kingdom of divers up near the near dive. Oh, such a wonderful land. When I was a mere pup, I, uh, I was adopted by a member <laughs> of the College of Bards there, and now, well, I travel the land, and live off its fruits and trade value for value. Sometimes I sell my sword. What other values do you have? <laughs> Aslan would ask that. Say again? Oh, Aslan asks what, what other values does he have? Oh, goodness, um, well, I am, I was trained in the bardic arts, I can, I am handy with my rapier, and I have never been known to lose at a battle of wits. Hmm. That's some also, for me. I, 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 have you, he, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oslin, what was your next question? Uh, I, Oslin was going to ask if the Wild Coast. What was that you cut out? Uh, has he ever been to the Wild Coast? Yes, yes, I was just leaving. I had, had been far to the south in Badwall. I was waylaid by these kobold miscreants. Anyway, while that while while that interesting interactions going on, Arius wants to inspect the traps to see if they're Selene traps or if someone's trespassing on Selene territory. Um, these are these are kobold trespassers. They are not Selenese at all. Hmm. Um, can Varg help Arius out and, um, like, sniff around, see it, like, if there was, like, a nest anywhere near that they can go and take care of, and whatever? 
Um, okay, yeah, you can do that while everybody... Okay, so here's what it is. Trell, mm-hmm. Oslin, Ripfang are, are back with the horses, correct? Um, yeah. Sure. Varg and Arius are sniffing around when you come upon a kobold encampment. Arius sends his familiar to scout out how many there are. There are ten kobolds here. One is a bit larger than the others. Um, he Okay, the, the rest of the kobolds look like little um, Jack Russell Terrier people. And this one looks like a bulldog person. (laughs) (laughs) The bulldog seems lost in thought, sitting by (laughs) the fire. And they seem to be cooking a rabbit. Varg Varg looks at Arius and is just like, I'm gonna climb the tree, get a better get a better vantage point, and uh, I guess if you want to talk to them and see if they're actually like doing bad things, you're the talker. I'm the shooter. (laughs) (laughs) Well, fair enough. I'll go and see what they're doing here. And Varg's gonna climb into one of the trees to get a good vantage point to see, you know, so if this if this goes sideways, he can help. Arius is going to go towards the encampment. Tina. Hello. There you are. Hello. Uh, yeah, yeah, we can. Yeah, my my internet cut out, so I had to jump to my phone. Uh... Okay. So last I heard, Varg was climbing a tree to get a better vantage. Yes, vantage point, sniping position, uh, however you want to put it. Hang on. Varg was climbing a tree to get a better vantage point. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> and Eris was going towards the encampment. Okay. Uh, Varg, you've scurried up a tree and you have a great vantage point. Should you need to attack, you will have advantage. Nice. Okay. So, Arius, you're approaching, and the kobold, the kobolds look up, and they begin yipping to each other. Yip, 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 yip. <laughs> the bulldog-faced one goes, "Greetings, Sir Elf." I suppose you're the one that's in charge of this group. Yes, I am. May I? ask what you are doing within this forest? Well, we are passing through in pursuit of a a vile brigand who stole from my home. Fair enough. But you do realize this is Sir Selene territory you are currently in. I do. So you, uh... Would you tres- prefer us to walk out? Are we not allowed to travel through here, through the borderlands? Yes, but... If someone stole something from your house, does that give you a right to trespass and hunt on another person's land? 
considering you're the only elf I see and we come through here not burning or despoiling your forests. But it has happened, I'm assuming. Not from us. Not from you. No, but others. If you will f forget this trespass nonsense, I can give you a piece of information. I suppose I can let this slide. Just beyond the forest, through yonder thicket, you can see that there, just in the distance on the hills and the grasslands, there is an encampment of 300 humans. Do they have a banner? Yes, they do. Something of a ship on the sea. Mm. Yes. And I can guarantee you they are here to cut down your trees. Oh, yes, that I have heard reports of. And one other bit of information I was... I may wish to delve into is do you know of anything of a priest of a purple robe order with a eye sigil yes i do she came to our our village to the south south of badwall near the sus forest she came there and uh She tried to recruit us. She took about a third of my clan. Very well. This, yes, this is helpful. No. I shall... Hmm. Are you, uh authorized to speak much for this elf place you're from? I do. We would be happy to help you stand against the humans. For? The right of free passage through this area. I'm sure that can be arranged. Also a pact for, of non-aggression for my people. I don't want adventurers coming to our homes and burning us out. Arius uh, gets to work on writing a uh, letter uh, to his uh, mother describing the situation. All right, this is the Yellow Paw tribe of Kobold. Mm-hmm. Is much known about it in Enstad. Um, no, no. I mean, there are literally thousands of these little humanoid enclaves roaming around, so... But still, okay. one less that wants to kill people and raid is probably a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we're going to cut over to uh, Trell and Oslin, and Rip Fang is um, regaling you with the time that he managed to uh, manage to escape from the uh, wrath of Zathrox the Green Dragon. Ooh, Trell is very interested in this. Yeah, bas basically he, he tells you that Almost any dragon, regardless of its color, is susceptible to flattery. And if you're good at flattery, you've got the worm eating out of your hand rather than eating your hand. <laughs> well, that does not conflict with anything that, uh, that Charles heard about them before. <laughs> Even Ren is susceptible to flattery. At which point Rin says, I am not. 
<laughs> <laughs> but you have such lovely scales. Oh god, and of course he melts. So <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, so Arius, are you returning with the uh, the yellow paw kobolds? No, before before he does, he wants to ask who who stole from them. Mm, yes, it was a human whelp. Didn't catch the name. We gave him a night of uh, a night to stay, and what he did was he slaughtered two of my guards and took our uh, the gem that brings fertility to our village. Hmm. And with that, Arius escorts them to through through the uh, woods. Okay, Varg, do you ever reveal yourself? <laughs> or are you just like predator-like, moving from branch to branch? <laughs> I am just moving from branch to branch, but I am keeping myself within um, eyesight of area, so that way if I hear something, because um, I wrote this down actually before we started doing it, but like my, mm -hmm. I, I, I couldn't, I didn't like finish like finalizing it because I've been doing it like as we went, because I also needed to find the associated language. But mm -hmm. um, I needed to add a third a third favorite enemy, and I was actually adding kobolds around the time that we were talking about coming over here, which is great. Um, mm -hmm. So I needed to find out. I was I was trying to find out the language name. Apparently, it's called Yip Yak. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, so I can speak Yip Yak apparently now because I have like that's how the rule goes for favorite enemy at level six. I get the favorite enemy and then their associated language. Um, so I'm moving across that way. So I'm listening for the kobolds and like how they're talking. So that way, keeping an eye on Arius, I'll be able to like use my cantrip messenger so I can send him a a, nice. a, whis a whispering message to let him know, hey, they're lying or hey, they're about to do something stupid. Get out of there. Okay. Uh, actually, the kobolds are pretty relieved. They're like, yeah, maybe this elf will, you know, they're talking in Yip Yak. They're like, maybe this elf will help us hunt down, hunt down the little bastard that killed, you know, two of their friends, um, Rover, Rover and Sparkles. <laughs> Names don't translate well from Yip Yak. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, you're just listening to them talk about um, avenging Rover and Sparkles. I like how all of your favorite enemies, like, whenever we kind of come across them, we usually end up just reasoning with them. Right? <laughs> well, okay, okay. I'm, I'm going to say something. Like, in most games I run, I don't usually do the favored enemy thing with rangers. I give them something else. Mostly because favored enemies just assumes that these races are just evil and will never do anything else. Um... So, I like my D and D I mean, a little less racist. I mean, I can't. Oh, well, the thing I I, I kind of do I kind of do enjoy it because like we we like this whole time like or orcs and gnolls were like my favorite enemy due to the fact that they were um like for like the whole backstory thing yeah. um that I had, but I added kobolds to my favorite enemy because like we've had so many instances where we've had good kobolds around us. So I was thinking like Varg would have while within the three months that he that they've been just hanging out and doing nothing he would yeah. have he would have learned about them learned their language and learned about their culture so that way he would have a better understanding but of course with that better understanding also comes a better understanding on how to deal with them if they turn out to be See, that is i love that respect it that's totally badass um <laughs> all right so um soon everybody's at the camp the uh the Kobolds have brought their. They had three rabbits. They brought that. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, they're. 
they're being pretty uh pretty nice they speak some limited common um Arga, their leader, um, which is really just the yip yak word for leader. Um, <laughs> leader is sitting there talking, and they're, you know, they're just doing their little canine best. <laughs> what What's the current time, roughly? It's probably midnight now. Oh, yeah, Aris is going to set up his tower. I can set up my tent. Do we have to roll for for those, by the way? With how good um, our towers and tents are? Honestly, no. It's it's not going to add any drama. Like, if you're trying to construct the tower in the middle of, like, a battle, yeah, that'll that'll take a roll. But honestly, you're just here. You're a freaking professional wizard. Of course you can do this. <laughs> <laughs> The kobolds are like, oh. Uh, Chell tells them that they can uh, use his tent if he'd like, since probably everyone else is going to be going to the tower. They're like, yes, tent, yay! <laughs> They're just kind of excited to be inside. <laughs> They're running in with their little tails wagging. Aww. Um, Charles just Arius, seems very we're... happy to be surrounded by all these canine creatures. Arius will be wanting to talk to uh, the Null and the leader of the uh, what are they called? The other? Oh, the kobolds. The kobolds to uh, map out where these uh, things are happening. Okay, so um yeah, you're in the uh in the war room of your tower. <laughs> Rip Fang is like, you know, I should have studied magic more. This is homie. Um I'm gonna say Vargs with uh with Arius too, like talking to them. So. Okay. <laughs> All right, so you find out that this force of humans is approaching from um from basic they, they're coming inward just about a mile and a half from where y'all are they've set up their camp now and um at dawn they intend according to the kobolds the kobold scouts uh overheard them talking about you know coming in and starting to to burn out the underbrush uh, whereabouts are we on the map are we near any of uh, are we near Fax or Safeton? Um, you are actually between them, uh, right past the D in Wild, uh, right before the D in Wild Coast. Uh, okay. Okay, so yeah, they've told you the, the particulars. There are three hundred humans. Aris is wondering so, if uh, the letter he sent to his mother would get to the Queen of Enstad about this. Um, probably. I don't, I don't know how quick messages travel in uh, in D and D, especially oh, with magic. Uh, with magic, um, you know, honestly, there's not that much. Um, not that much communication magic, shockingly, in D&D. &D. Um, you could, however... I'm going to say if you sent your familiar with the message, she could get it within two a night or two. Okay. Yeah, he's going to send the letter about the humans and the kobolds. Two okay. letters. All right, so you've sent two letters. And uh, what do you do with the rest of the evening? Um, well, uh, wait, hold on one sec. There is one, uh, I don't, 
uh, Chad, do you remember if you got the spell that, um, yeah, Tree Stride, um. Yeah, I have that. Okay, so, it's supposed to, I believe, work, uh, oh wait, no, it's, like, within 500 feet. I thought it was the one where you can mm -hmm. just, like, go through a, uh. Uh, a, a, any tree and like pop out on any tree that you that you're familiar with sorry because yeah. like i was about to say if if he could do that like it would be like an instant uh travel thing t to there yeah well you have to roll for it <laughs> and the first one <laughs> distance, the higher the difficulty so So, yeah, All right, so, he... um, oh, go ahead, sorry. I was just going to say, if he tried that and failed miserably, he could end up, like, <laughs> in, like, in a tree. Stuck in, in a, a tree. <laughs> well, maybe no, in a tree I in a different place. <laughs> now, I might, I might put you somewhere up in the far north with the tiger nomads, or put <laughs> you in the Medio <laughs> jungle in the south, um, but I wouldn't kill you. That's just not right. <laughs> tiger nomads, though. Yeah, the tiger and wolf nomads are pretty cool. Neat. I would, I would like each, to meet Each those. barbarian in those tribes um, has a life-bonded um, pet wolf or tiger. Oh, that's neat. I hope we yeah, go there sometime. They are pretty cool. <laughs> All right, so y'all are, uh, I guess, like I said, staying the night. Um Arius, you kind of miss Gromex cooking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not the same. <laughs> Rip Fang burned some water. <laughs> <laughs> Arius gently nudges him out of uh, away from the fires. No, 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 oh. just, 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, pardon me, pardon me so very much. I did not mean to produce such smoke. <laughs> if you make smoke from water, try not to cook anything. <laughs> Go 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 and munching on a, a rabbit leg. Go go and, go and ask uh, go and ask um, Trail for some berries <laughs> or, or something. I do have berries, berries. Master Arius. You wound me. I am a meat eating creature. <laughs> then go and share with the with the with the with the kobolds. I'm afraid just a, a tiny portion of of rabbit would. Arouse my appetite without putting her back to bed. Go and hunt for something. Oh, all right. I'll I'll go hunting. Hunting. <laughs> you do know how to hunt, don't you? <laughs> I could use some pointers, actually. I, and I mean, you're an elf. You surely know how to hunt, correct? And probably better than anyone, you've had literally centuries to master the art. So he is a, an, a you know, a, a wizard, a noble wizard. <laughs> well, he Rip Fang doesn't quite get that. <laughs> if you're wanting people who know how to hunt and live in a forest, then I am not the right person for that task. <laughs> <sighs> Do you know anyone who is? Arius turns to Varg. <laughs> Varg, Arius and the Knoll Rip Fang are looking at you. <laughs> he just looks up and just, okay, what were you talking about? And why are you looking at me? Could dirt, you dirt. possibly, I don't know, hunt down an animal and kill it and then help us possibly cook it? He leans over to you, Arius. Do you know how to cook at all? 
I certainly know how to burn things. <laughs> so do I. Oh, we I... can burn things, um, but if you could cook something, we would be immensely appreciative. I I can hunt it, skin it, and cook it. I can do all three. So, so you, you guys are don't have in to... fact one of the most beautiful creatures I have ever seen. <laughs> Um, um, I'm just gonna go hunt now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Awkwardly so Varg, walks away. <laughs> Varg, you easily bring down a musk ox. <laughs> there are mus musk oxes out here. Yeah, for some reason, Gary Gygax put that on the encounter table, so I'm like, okay, <laughs> there's musk oxes. <laughs> that a big boy. Out of, uh, just a quick curiosity. How much of this map is Sealand territory? Um, Basically, the Welkwood, all of that area of Selene up to the Cron, uh, Cron Hills where um, uh, Verbabank and all that is up to the Gnarly the Gnarly Forest that is the northernmost border of Selene and how far east does it go is it just the tree um, line uh, just the tree line and then it actually stops at the two rivers near Corwood Arius may or may not have some kind of slight imperialistic ambitions, but there you go. Imperialistic ambitions. <laughs> to stop humans taking over the territory, why not establish a trading hub on the sea? <laughs> uh, so, so are you making the East Saline Company? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, East Amedio. Yes, yes. Have to go colonize the Amedio jungle. <laughs> no, not colonize, just trade. We're not going to be a British Empire. We're going to be a Venice. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... um, Yeah, so... Varg has brought back just like... Brought it back, skinned it, and prepared the tastiest food you guys have ever encountered. Because, well, Varg, you understand how to make everything in the forest work for you. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, the kobolds are, are actually climbing out of the tent like, what's that smell? Um, Varg just calls out in Yip Yak what, what, what the smell is. <laughs> Okay, they're like, can we have some? <laughs> I will I mean, give you three copper. <laughs> I mean, so, so this ox is the ox is pretty big, isn't it? It is. Like, oxes are musk oxes, especially are massive. Yeah. So, like, I, I'm sure we can afford to let the tribe of kobolds eat with us. <laughs> um. I mean, yeah, we, Unless like, there's something I don't know about kobolds where they have like insatiable appetite. No, no, the, the, co the kobolds not only do that, but they help you preserve what you can't use for the meal. They're nice. quite handy hmm. at it. So yeah, so obviously okay, refuse, so... The, refuse the money and let them meet with us. So all right, so everybody is well fed. That gives you ten extra hit points. Ooh. You know, just Ooh. those extra hit points, like um, you know, like your spells will sometimes give. So, uh, so you temporary? got ten temporary hit points. Yeah. Okay. And I will say, Trell did not get on to Bard for for hunting. It it was like a necessary thing. As long as it was done like respectfully, he's fine with it. Well, that's yeah. that's 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 the thing that you know I always pictured Trail kind of liking about Varg because he because he never hunted just for the sake of hunting. He doesn't do it for sport. He does it for the sake of survival, and he's always as careful as he possibly can. He never like shoots multiple times. He always tries to aim for the perfect spot that's going to kill it almost instantaneously. So you know he tries to make it as painless and fast as possible. Uh, at least that's how I like to picture Varg hunting. Oh, and Oslin, remember, you have the power second breakfast. 
<laughs> yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can use up a ration and feed everyone and help them regain six hit points. Yeah. <laughs> Once a day. <laughs> All right. So, um, the, the the next day comes and you start hearing the drums of human. So, Oslin, what do you do? Hear the drum. What are we hearing the drums of? Humans coming to cut the forest. Or actually set fire to parts of it and burn out the underbrush. Um, he will. Are, would, so, would, would I be able to see them from like which direction they're going to start at? So, mm -hmm. I think he would race to the top of that that look first okay all right there there as the kobolds said there's about 300 of them um they're really not that well equipped uh most of them look to be they're not even soldiers they're not even armed they're just carrying tools and there's like a couple of maybe two or three dozen uh, or two dozen armed men uh, with swords and ring mail on horseback who are kind of leading them. Uh, okay, he will rush down and let the party know that um, they're about to start. Um, I would like to mention that, like, uh, on, on the way here and when they got here, Trell would have been looking for signs of, like, you know, like, unicorns, treants, things that like to protect forests. <laughs> um, unfortunately, uh, those are generally deep forest creatures, and y'all are at the edge. Oh, okay. Alright, let's see, I wonder if there's a way I could try to fireproof at least some of this. Well, well, what I was thinking about doing was when we uh, plant growth mm -hmm. and like have extra, you know, plant growth, you know, in front of them. Yeah, I also have spike growth, but it only covers a small area. I also have frost. Well, it might no, knife. it might cut. It might cover a larger area. Ooh. Oh, that is true. It might do that. <clears throat> Um, let's see. So you make a wisdom roll to cast it. Oh, okay. And then see. I will roll the magnitude. And we'll see what happens. Alright. Okay. So just plain wisdom. Yep. Well, it's wisdom plus your. Holy crap. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say you succeeded. Um. <laughs> Rolling the magnitude. Um, holy crap! Okay, I've rolled a physical die. Um, I got a 19. Um, okay. So you have erected, like, for the space of two miles on the edge of the forest, you have a zone of spikes. Wait, I think Chad's the one who uh, who roll, rolled that. Yeah, I rolled the, the 21 oh, rolled for that? the plant growth. So, yeah. Okay, okay, so you have created this massive wall of vegetation. And and I want to add spikes to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, okay, so I'm going to roll the magnitude on that sucker, and we'll see what happens. Oh. Okay, you, you just got, like, the, uh, a big area... Um, unfortunately for the people, they don't know where the spikes are. Oh, okay. Um, however, the men, the men with their, their torches and axes are, are kind of shying away. They're like, well, I don't, I'm, I'm not dealing with some kind of sorcery. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> a couple, a couple of, no, but then like the guy who says that, uh, one of the guys just roughly smacks him on the back of the head with the haft of his spear blood shoots from the guy's mouth and he falls down it's like you'll get in there or we'll kill you all 
Ah, so they're slaves. Yep. Ah, okay. Ooh. Hmm. So, like, if they start setting fire, I would like... Like, this is supposed to be for a creature, but I have Frostbite as a cantrip. So, like, I, maybe I, I will, could try I will cast... let you ro roll to use it. Yeah. I'd and like... try to stop fires. When I try casting that on the ground. Just just a, uh, a, a 20, right? Or, like, a Wisdom. Well... Actually, you already cast the spike growth, or spike growth. At this point, we got to do Arius next. Oh, okay. Arius, your action. Um, I'm. I'm wondering to stop the fires and to possibly. Freeze some people in. Uh, freeze the armed people to use um, cone of cold. You're probably going to hit the slaves if you use that. Yeah, uh... it's like a cone in front of you. You'd also have to make sure to be visible to them as well. Nobody's tried talking to them. Y'all just scared the crap out of them. <laughs> Um, <laughs> all right, Arius. All right, Arius will go and talk to them. It's his. It's technically his land. Well, it's so his. Are you going to try to threaten them, or be diplomatic? I'm going to be managed to threaten anybody. Ooh. <laughs> what about persuade, as well? Persuasion, not so much advantage. Um, well. Depends. If you try to persuade the slaves to attack their their oppressors, that might have advantage. Because we're going to listen to the elf that magically conjured all that shit in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he had no part in that. I well, think... they don't know. Well, like I said, these are freaking peasants. <laughs> They've never been outside of five miles of their home before today. <laughs> Arius is actually going to use the the um, is going to mention the trick uh, the um, trick Varg did and have all the party hide in trees while Arius goes to talk. That way, yeah. they they can attack if anything goes wrong from hidden positions. Why do I suddenly see, I see like Var Varg? Are you up in a tree? Yes. Varg, you're up in a tree, and it's like a Christmas tree of smaller canines with you. <laughs> You've got like ten freaking kobolds with crossbows <laughs> <laughs> sitting up there, getting ready to unleash death when you say so. <laughs> which I'll you I'll say in yip yak, so it'll just be like a little high pitched yip or something, which is gonna be great if I have to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're saying like this awesome, like we will we will unleash death upon them, but it's like Oh my god, that was great. Um but yeah, I'm in the I'm in the tree just uh just waiting to keep an eye on everything. I also have that messenger cantrip, so like if I'm anywhere close to someone and can hear someone speaking, I if I feel like Arius is too threatened, I can just call him to back up or something right um or whatever so no that's perfect all right so you have advantage both on hit and damage from where you are nice all right so that brings us back around to oslin uh, the people, the people out there are still arguing with each other. I mean, the the, the farmers are kind of getting pissy. The men at arms are getting pissy. Oslin, what are you gonna do? Um, I think Oslin's going to hold for the moment. Okay. The people with the fire, if they're gonna come for, and if they are, then he has kind of his action ready for it. Okay. All right. So you're holding, Varg. You're holding. Yes. So Arius, spotlight's on you. <laughs> so he's coming. He's coming out of the forest. Uh, 
he walks to the men in the, in their uh, armor, uh, the armed men. I demand to speak with one in charge. That would be me. A scar-faced gentleman um, with red hair and bronze skin. Your name, sir? Clontark. What are you doing Who here? Are you? I am Arius Syrian. What are you doing to this forest? He gets down off of his horse. He says to his men, Pitch my tent. Please come in. We need to talk, sir. Okay. He, he goes in. Right, you're in there. The guy's like, Are you, uh, you're a noble, right? Yes. Are you a member of the Lun Lunargent Thorn? Is Arius a member of this? <laughs> no, you've never heard of this place. Of these okay. people. I have not heard of this. these people. That's unfortunate. All right, he's drawing a dagger. <laughs> Looks like he's going to try to put you down before you can get out of here. And we can't see anything because he went into the tent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. I figured he would like send his uh, his familiar or something if something went wrong. The familiar is busy delivering a message. Ah, uh, right, that's true. <laughs> if that's the case, I am going to use... Dimension door to get out of there. <laughs> got you had dimension door. Roll, roll a d twenty. Uh, he's got actually he's got every spell level. Uh, he's got all the spells he, that you've listed for him one through nine. Ah, all right. So okay. roll a d twenty, Arius. Got to be to fifteen. Uh, just roll your intelligence. Okay. Um, does that include my uh? Proficiency. proficiency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's four. So. Oh. <laughs> All right. Let's roll the magnitude. <laughs> okay. You are now right next to Trell. <laughs> <laughs> Trell almost punches you for immediately popping next to him. <laughs> All right, so Varg, you see all this. The the man comes out of the tent and he starts screaming, "We gotta burn the forest, men! Forward, kill that elf!" <laughs> and Varg from the tree gives the gives the order to. Um, I mean, by this point, they the kobolds would also understand not to kill the peasant people, right? Like yeah. if, he, if he so if he says just a like you know fire no just no the armed have... men yeah okay cool so yeah he just he's he just calls out for a fire and like just takes a shot so okay I'm, roll to hit difficulty is fifteen holy moly <laughs> <laughs> okay Varg is like. Pfft. You fire, um, how many shots do you get, by the way, Varg? What do you mean? Uh, do you get to shoot twice around? Uh, I have three, three I basic attacks, and then I have a bonus. Okay. All right, so I'll let you roll four dice, or three dice. Uh, so roll Misery's End, click it three times for the damage.
All right, you feather a man's throat with your arrow. Wow. And another one. Two more are down. Um, you're just you're just launching, and you are hitting right in the cracks of their armor. The kobolds. In uh, in exactly your um. Oh wow. Okay. The kobolds just cut down the men at arms. <laughs> the leader is all that's left. He is watching this and he jumps on his horse. He's trying to ride away. Arius. Or, yeah, no, Oslin, what are you going to do? <clears throat> um, Oslin's going to cast Burning Wind so that the people with the that have the fire are uh, not going to be able to do that. Okay, yeah, roll for it. Uh, it's a wisdom do do. check. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have advantage. <laughs> okay, you've extinguished every bit of fire that these people have. Sweet. Everyone's everyone's kind of standing around going, oh, they can't see the halflings. Because <laughs> halflings are almost <laughs> invisible in forests. <laughs> so it's just like, that elf is awful! What is it <laughs> <laughs> um, the mercenary captain's riding away. Arius is your go. Arius is going to calm the people. He he wants Varg and the Cobalts to capture the leader alive. So he's going to um, talk to the um, other humans to to calm them down. All right, make a charisma check with advantage. You got to beat a twelve. This is not going to be that hard. Don't roll a one. Don't roll a one. Don't roll a one. <laughs> I've rolled two ones. No. Okay. Good. Whew. All right. So you've calmed you've calmed the folks down. Trell. Um. How far away is that guy right now? Right now he's probably thirty yards. You could hit him with. What do you want to try on him? I was wanting, actually, to conjure animals and something that will scare the heck out of that horse to throw him off and possibly, like, constrict around him like large snakes or something. That but is just the I guy, was... not the horse. Yeah, not the horse. <laughs> not constrict the okay. horse. Okay. <laughs> Correct. All right, so roll a 20. Roll your wisdom check. All right. And I will see how well you do. Okay. Do you get a giant anaconda or do you get a garter snake? I may have gotten a garter snake. <laughs> um, unfortunately, you you can't. He's riding away too quickly. Uh -huh. You can't draw enough concentration to actually channel your your na uh, your the nature energy necessary. Okay, I do have a couple other little tricks up my sleeve with the turn that I have. Um, one is. I'm going to use my uh, bonus action for, uh, for mm -hmm. a sp uh, spirit bond um, in order to... Hold on. In order to use the hawk one, which gives advantage to range attacks. And then, nice. uh, and then Rin is going to shoot his little sleeping arrow at him. <laughs> All right. So um, roll to cast that. The difficulty is only 11. It is... Rin's little bow. I feel he may have hit him. Okay. Swing. Oh. Oh. <laughs> he, oh, God, yes. He slumps from his horse. <laughs> um, let's see what the magnitude on Rin's little... little sleeping power is here. Okay, um... Unless this guy is kissed by an elf... 
<laughs> He's not waking up. Arius? No. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, you're half elf. You could do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not half elf. I'm just a, a wolf person who can look like an elf. <laughs> Varg just walking over. So we're descended from elves who were turned into lycanthropes. We're technically elvish ourselves. All right, you kiss him with the big muzzle and tongue of yours. That <laughs> his face would count. <laughs> Varg just looks at Trout. Remember, you gave me permission for this. If I hear about it later, I'm you know, going to be upset. <laughs> just wash your mouth. <laughs> Wait, bind his hands. Bind him. Bind him first. <laughs> Varg. Oh, obviously. I was just going to kiss him awake and let him run away again. <laughs> Search him first. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. The little halfling thief can, ha can, have, it, can have his turn when I get done. No, I don't be, I'm not a thief. I'm just saying, what if he's got... Yeah, That's true, you might have weapons. You are constantly searching people. You're worse than Jolly. <laughs> no, go and search. Why don't you go and search right, the others so that are dead? Oswald, you search him, right? Oslin, did you say you were going to search this guy? Yeah, I'll go search him. Okay. I'm going to find his horse. You find his horse. The horse is like... I guess I'm not gonna get any apples anymore. You killed him. Wait, what did he say? I guess I'm not gonna get apples anymore. You've killed him. <laughs> I'll give you apples. Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Currently, all I have, all I have, is berries. Unless I can use Druidcraft to conjure some apples, actually. You can. You do. You yeah. don't have to roll for it. <laughs> now the horse the horse hugs you you know how they put their their uh nose over your shoulder and pull you yeah that's what he does all right <laughs> okay so oslin you find a bunch of documents in elvish and a whole bunch of selenese gold in a pouch on this guy like almost 700 gold pieces Nice. Uh, what do the documents say? Uh, if you read Elvish, you know they're, they're from <clears throat> something called the Brotherhood of the Lunargent Thorn. What and is basic, that? You don't know. <laughs> but it's basically, just... it, you know, it's saying, um, we need you to attack Selene. Uh, leave the livery of Safeton in your wake. Um, Oslin will relay that information. I mean, I'm sure everybody else could probably. Can everybody else read all of it? Arius can certainly read Elvish. Well, I know you can. Because sure <laughs> I can, I can read it. So I mean, um, unless un you know, no, uh, for for Varg, that's 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 going to be a no for Varg. Really? Can we do like an uh, Arcana check on that Brotherhood to see if like? Yeah, absolutely. Um. Yeah, Arcana would work. Yeah, just make an, make an Arcana or Intelligence check. Ah. Something about a thorn. <laughs> uh, um, let, let, me, let me try it. There's definitely a plant theme here. Yay! <laughs> um, the only thing you know about is the Lunargent Thorn, which is a a story from the Feywild about um, the legendary homeland of the High Elves. Hmm. Why do I feel like that? If you tra if you like translate this over to Varg, he'll be able to piece it together, <laughs> or at least his dad would. <laughs> 
can, can certainly try, I imagine. Well, like, you know, because, like, like, Trell is, I, I guess, like, okay, Ares can speak, can speak Elvish. It's written in Elvish, right? And then, you know, you know, Trell can just, like, rem can, like, rem remember that, and then, like, it's complicated. Okay. Um, Varn, just... unfortunately, unfortunately, other than a few legends your father told you, um, the Lunargent Thorn is often thought to be a myth. Um, it's kind of a, uh, uh, remembrance of times when elves were great. Huh. By the way, Iris is going to uh, put these uh, documents in a letter, and when his raven, his um, owl returns, he's going to send those off <laughs> as well. Okay, all right. So, are there no other birds? I mean, familiar. Well, I mean, you, you, you druid, you druid types could summon them. Yeah, That's I, what I'm saying. Like, uh, is there a way that I can? Bring a bird to us, or I you do. I have I my can... own familiar as well. He's a bat. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was about to say I could conjure animal. Plus, I I could also just send Car <clears throat> with with the letters there and see if you know Varg's dad could you know do research for us. But I don't know. We have so many options. <laughs> I mm -hmm. have several garter snakes as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfor okay. The reason I'm not really entertaining yours too much, uh, Trell, is because bats and garter snakes are not generally long-distance flyers. <laughs> um. Yeah, so... <laughs> so could I, like, reach out to, you know, the surrounding nature to see if there's a bird big enough? Uh, yeah, yeah, you... you call a hawk. And, and the, it agrees. It agrees to take the the documents to the queen. Oh, that's nice. There we go. Or who do you want them delivered to? Arius, well, who do you want these these papers delivered to? Should we take well, them to Celine? Yeah, well, the all the well, Arius is sending all the letters to his mother because sending the letters directly to the queen would not be proper channels. <laughs> There's also the uh, le the leader of the of the uh, woodland protectors who sent us off in the, yes. in the first place. I would say like that's where I would send it to. We and then like I and then there's then there's the people who live in the Feywild that you know you have connections to. Um, we so like I honestly I could see Varg like proposing like a um almost. Oh well, a gathering of like the three different ways you could go. Like they could all meet up and like discuss this, since it's such a big thing. Oh, I lost. Okay, we might also want to ask you... these slaves questions before we start making any uh, any notes. I I, I don't think the slaves all need some work. <laughs> There are 300 of them. We might want to ask where they came from and what they were, <laughs> you know. They're staring at y'all wide-eyed. They don't know what the hell to make of all this. <laughs> so, like, Trell comes forward and says, Sorry, we really didn't want you burning down our forest. Yes, sir, we, we, won't, we won't never <laughs> burn down your forest. Where are you from? And who are those men? Um uh, we, we we come from Windsail, it's a little fishing village on the coast. Um they rode in and, and told us we was coming with them. Uh we got a problem though, cause they got our women folk back home. Said if if they didn't come back they was gonna gonna kill them. Ooh. Okay, we've got their leader alive. We might also want to go there next. Where is Windsill on this map? Um, it is if you go right along the line from the top of the D to the coast, there it is. Oh, okay. <sighs> All 
All right, we, we're not that far from there. No. Okay. So it's it, it's like right at the very tip of that last land hexagon, right beside Woolly Bay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess it's the next area to go to. All right, so... Okay. So I guess we can take this entire army of people <laughs> back to their, um... Like after yeah. we send messages, that is. Like I, I propose sending a message to the to the woman who who's the like the leader of the um, woodland protectors. Should we send like the papers that we found to her? I would I would say so. Yeah. She'd probably know better than anybody about like uh, Feywild stuff. All right, so I'm gonna say. Um... We're going to pause right here on the edge of the forest um, while I prepare wind sail next week. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hope you all enjoyed tonight. Um, this yes. was Very much tons so, yeah. of fun. <laughs> and I do and also well, like um, the, uh, the, the new uh, thing with, with the magic. Yeah, because it's like, I have a slot for this. Oh my god. It was like that was kind of cool when it when it was part of a mini game you did in in like white box or first edition. But like by fifth edition, it's like look, everybody's like superheroes with like awesome powers. Just let them have their awesome powers. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> yeah, I was I was like looking at my uh, at my stuff I could do, and since you were you said you were going to be a bit more lax with like what they can do, uh, mm -hmm. like just a lot of stuff just kind of opened up. <laughs> to me while I was looking that yeah. and I was like these are more useful than they were before exactly because you know like heavily defined spells work for a very specific kind of setting and honestly you know nobody nobody here was like well I just want to be a human and I want to have three hit points um <laughs> <laughs> nobody did that I mean there's there's a genre of gaming for that but this is not it so yeah, I just figured it. W I figured it was more fair to y'all, and it let you be more creative with your magical powers anyway. Yeah, I'm like I'm, Oslin I'm getting to wipe that. out the flame. Yeah, because oh, yeah. like warding wind usually doesn't do that, and that also made me think that I have like a frostfire shield thing, and I could like I could have tried to use that as well, and that was that was a pretty cool thought. Oh yeah, I mean like if you if and the magnitude is gonna sway a lot, but like if you you know if you get like fifteen or better magnitude, you're going to get like five or ten times what you'd expect from the spells. So. Yeah, like the the only issue I could possibly see is just that like I I noticed like none of us have very big bonuses when it comes to like our our uh, our skills. Uh, not well okay and the re the reason okay there's there's something else that i kind of do is rather than have y'all keep track of five thousand bonuses um what i do is i really just look at your level and i look at the level of resistance and i just assign a difficulty class that i think would you know taking like as though you had all those bones like you remember i think i said something varg was doing the difficulty was five um because he's a ranger that's what he does arius is a wizard he shouldn't have to you know it's it's not like you know i'm i don't know i'm looking you know i'm an a, a doctor and i suddenly forget oh man i rolled a one i can't remember how to how to use a stethoscope <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I, <laughs> So yeah, <laughs> what I what I tend to do is like I said, I tend to just modify my difficulty numbers depending on who's doing it. Like um Oslin trying to shoot a bow, the difficulty might be twenty. Um Varg trying to shoot a bow, the difficulty's probably gonna be ten to fifteen. Um <laughs> You know, but it's just because these are not things that my character is good at. Yeah, that makes sense. Like anything just like, nature having to do with yeah. nature like uh like trail would probably be really good at 
Yeah, I mean, you'll notice I don't make you roll to recognize animals and plants because it's like, this is this is what he, his, his the name of his class is Woodland Protector. <laughs> <laughs> and I really, you I, know, you're not going to be. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, I really, in, I really enjoy that uh, that 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 idea because it really customizes the um the 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 ba the battle system to each to yeah. each character because you know um i mean in a sense like you because like you said we have the two we have like two bow users but obviously one just purely is a bow expert while the other kind of also has a dagger and you know goes bull so the bow mm -hmm. the bow the bow difficulty will change but if varg were yeah. to try to hit them with a sword then obviously that difficulty would jump up to like 20, 20 or something and but well for... no, it's going to depend i mean if like if varg's fighting if varg's fighting a, a an asthmatic goblin um, <laughs> you're make you roll you're just going to like spank him with the flat of your sword <laughs> <laughs> it's like <laughs> um so yeah, it's it's really just kind of um, something that I've started doing because I have like eight editions of D and D swimming around in my head now. Um, is I just I basically try to get the spirit of what you're trying to do and what your character is, and don't worry about making you all have to. Okay, now I've got this plus and that plus, and I got to stick these plus. Forget it. Just do what you're good at. <laughs> I especially and like that we, and um, I, I especially like that we don't have uh, like the the limits on the spell slots anymore as well because I was always extremely conservative because of that. Yeah, and I mean that's what's the fun of playing a magic wielding character if you don't ever use the stinking magic, <laughs> <laughs> or you so. use it all up and you're pretty much useless later. Well, I played for well. Now it, it was interesting because like it. When I ran, when I played White Box D and D for the first time years and years ago, wizards only had one spell per day. Hmm. Wow! And and after that, it was it was all. But the thing was, we didn't have to roll for stuff. Like uh, if I was searching for traps, I just told the G, the DM I'm searching for traps, and the DM would tell me what I had found. Um. And so it, it's interesting because, like I said, I like to let my players in that spirit, I like to let y'all tell me what you want to do. And if I think a role's necessary, we'll do that. But generally, you know, I'm you're heroes. You're not, uh, you're not uh, a couple of dorks with, uh, with uh, mall, mall ninja swords <laughs> running through the woods LARPing, you know? You know what <laughs> <laughs> also I'd, li I'd like to say that i'm happy that like trell has now racked up another horse to put in that pasture <laughs> i know right you're just, you're just... trell's become the most successful horse farmer in all of Celine. <laughs> <laughs> trell's home for misbegotten horses <laughs> I, I was I was uh, I, I was actually really scared because like um because when you were saying that he was like riding off I was thinking to myself I was like okay so obviously the <clears throat> person with a with a good shot record is going to be the one that's going to have to do something about that but since he's going to be far off I you know wouldn't do whatever um Trell being able to stop the horse and um get that guy um get that guy off of him I was really scared because I was afraid Trell wouldn't be able to do anything and I was going to have to like at least just like say that i'm not going to kill the horse but like maim the horse with an arrow to get it to fall over so that yeah. guy falls um but i could have also um i could also use my healer's kit on the horse and you know fix it patch yeah. it up. um well and i mean cure wounds works on animals too um but yeah so yeah well once again i don't ever try to think of how you're going to get out of something I just kind of create situations and let y'all figure it out. And this is why we love you. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> All right, everybody. Yep. Well, thank you so much for playing, and I'll see everybody next week. Thank you. Uh, good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks.